All right, so we just recapped. So now we're starting something new, but we're still solving equations. We're just building on, okay? And the equations we're going to look at are equations where the variable is in on both sides of the equation, okay? Both sides. So our learning goals are to learn to solve a multi-step equation by applying the correct inverse operations in the proper order. So we're still looking at what an inverse operation is. Add seven, subtract seven. But here's one we haven't encountered before. What would be the inverse operation of adding two x? Added 2x, how could you undo add 2x? Subtract 2x, good. So we've never had to subtract a term that had an x in it before, but we will today, okay? The inverse operation of subtract 4 would be add 4. So the inverse operation of subtract 5x, would be add 5x. So again, we haven't had to add a term to both sides that had an x with it before, but we will today. Okay? And then again, the inverse operation of add 3x would be subtract 3x. Oops. Let's do this last week too. I know what it is. Something about blocking this, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. So sometimes an equation will contain the variable, which is usually x, in more than one location. So here's our equal sign again above our balance. So if we look at what's on this side. We've got one, two, three, four, five x's and a minus one. And if we look at what's on this side of the balance, we've got three x's and one, two, three, four, five plus five positive. Okay? So this side of the balanced equation, remember these sides are equal, has five x's and minus one. And then on this side, we have 3x plus 5. Okay, so that's what that picture represents. So let's look how to solve it algebraically. So again, the idea is your final answer when you get down to this last step is going to be x equals something. What value of x makes this true? But we want to, instead of just guessing checking, we want to use algebraic reasoning. So the first thing we do and we want to get our x's in one spot, okay? So my choices are, if I subtract 3x on this side and on this side, and notice I'm going to line it up with my other term that has an x, I've done the same thing to both sides, so I've kept my equation balanced. Does that make sense? So 3x, and don't forget to write the x down, 3x subtract 3x is 0. So there's my zero pair. 5x subtract 3x. So that's back to collecting like terms. 5x's take away 3x's. How many x's do I have? Two? Yeah. So now on this side I've got two x's. I've still got my minus one. And on this side I have five. Positive five and five are the same thing. Okay? So just doing that first step, I've turned it into an equation that I remember how to solve now. Now I can say which side has x on it, because now I've got x only onto the one side. And once I've got x on the one side, it just goes like it did before. Okay, I want to do undo, I want to use reverse dead mass. So I want to undo any adding or subtracting on the side that has x. So the first thing I had to do was get the x in one spot, okay? Then it just goes like it did before. So I want to undo the subtract one by adding one to both sides of the equals. So 
So we have two x equals five plus one is six. Then I want to undo the multiplying by two by dividing by two on both sides, which gets me all the way down to x equals three. Okay? x equals three. So that would mean that five times three, which is 15 minus one, this side works out to 14. This side should also work out to 14. Three times three is nine, plus five is 14. So three is the answer that makes the side equal. Okay? That's what it means when we're solving the equation. We're finding the value of x that makes that true. Okay. Oops, again. For some reason, I have to scroll down like this. Okay. So again, we want to look at this picture and see what equation it's telling me. There's my two sides. This side has three x's minus five ones. This side's written a bit differently. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones and a negative x. So I could write that as seven minus x. So this picture represents three x minus five, then my equal sign where the balance is, and then this picture represents seven subtract x because it's a negative x. Mm -hmm. So remember, that when you see a negative right in front of a uh, variable, it really means there's a, a negative one in front of it, okay? And I've got x on both sides of the equals, all right, which is different than we did last week. Our x's are on both sides, so our first step is to get the x on one side of the equal sign. And your question's gonna be, do I add x to both sides, or do I subtract it from both sides in order to create a zero pair? My idea is I want to get rid of x off this side, so how do I do that to create a zero pair? Add, good. So add x, and you can try it, negative 1x plus x is your zero pair, but if I do it on the right side, I have to do it on the left side, okay? So minus x plus x is 0. 3x plus another x is 4x. Still got the minus 5 equals 7. So that first step is the critical step. That's the new one today. Okay, we've got to figure out how to get the x's to just be on one side of the equation. And it's always going to involve adding or subtracting to both sides. So once you've got x onto your uh, just one side, the side with x is what tells you what to do, and you're going to use reverse bed mass. So you want to undo the subtract 5 by adding 5 to both sides. Okay, seven plus five is twelve, and then you want to undo the multiply by four by dividing by four, and you get x equal to three. Make sense? Okay, so we've added that extra step where the first step is to get the x onto just one side only. So solve each equation by performing the correct inverse operation in the correct order. So again, our first step is going to be, okay, look, I'm scanning my equation and I see x is on both sides of the equals. I want to get the x's together. So see what you think the first step would be if you're getting the x's together. 
to what you would do to both sides of your venue actions. Right down there on opposite sides of a wall, and you want to get them to the same side using algebra, using algebra, okay? Any grade nine want to see what their first step was? Get the axes together on the same side? No? Subtract 3x, because that creates a zero pair here. But then I have to do it, line it up with the x on this side. Okay? So 3x minus 3x is your zero pair, so those are gone. 5x subtract 3x is 2x. I still have the minus 11 equals 7. Okay? Now you've got your x's together. So you've turned it into a question that we're familiar with. The x is only in one spot now. So the side with x tells you what to do. You want to undo adding and subtracting first. So add 11 to both sides. 2x equals 18. And we know 2x means 2 times x. So we divide by 2 and get x equal to 9 if you do 18 divided by 2. Okay, so look at how many things you had to do here. Step 1, you had to subtract 3x from both sides, then add 11 to both sides, then divide both sides by 2. So we did two step equations, now we're on to three steps. All right, again, see if you can figure out how you can get this time the variables m. Still works the same as an x. How can you get the m so they're just on one side only? Subtract what? Or just subtract four codes so that I'm glad you said that because that's a common thing to write. But no, you have to subtract four m's. Okay, so don't think you can just write subtract four there because you know in your mind that you're subtracting four m. You have to show me that you know you're subtracting four m. Perfect. So there's my zero pair. Seven m take away four m. Three m minus nine equals nine. And it's a side with the variable, in this case it's an M. That drives what's going to happen next. Okay, lots of people adding nine to both sides. Awesome. So you mean the zero pair with the minus nine on both sides? 3m equals 18. Divide by 3, good. And then you end up getting m equals 6. Okay? Right? So decide how you're going to get the x's together on the same side. How are we going to get them together so that they're not on opposite sides of the wall? Any grade nine have a thought? Anyone? 
there's two things I can do. I can get my axes on this side. Does everyone always want to get the axes on the left side? How many people feel comfortable when the axes on the left side? Okay, two votes, and they're, you're the only votes, so that's what we're going to do. So if I want to get the x to the left side all the time, then how do I undo positive 3x? Subtract 3x. If you're going to do that, which is fine, you just have to be really careful. Here's my zero pair, but negative 2x subtract 3x. Negative 2 subtract 3 is negative 5x. So make sure you can get that either in your head or on your calculator. I prefer on your calculator so you can always double check. But you're going to type in negative 2 subtract 3. Okay? Plus 17 equals 2. All right? So if you're more comfortable just always having x on the same side, you have to deal with that negative. You can't drop it, you have to remember that you've got a negative on that side. And then you want to undo the add 17 by subtracting 17. And again, you have to be careful when you're using your calculator to subtract 17. Because I know your brain automatically thinks in positives. Okay, so you've got to use your calculator or force yourself to think in negatives. And then because x is being multiplied by negative 5, you can't drop the negative. You've got to divide by negative 5. And again, you have to be able to key that into your calculator without dropping a negative. Negative 15 divided by negative 5. And we learned the very first day, negative divided by negative should be a positive. Make sure when you put it in your calculator, Negative divided by negative should give you a positive. Okay, this one looks tricky. Okay, so we want to get our x's together. So think about what you would do. They're on opposite sides of the wall right now, and you want them to be on the same side. Is that giving me a zero pair? So that means I've got them together, but on this side, which is still okay. 2x plus x is 3x plus 11. So I avoided having the negative sign in front of the x's. Okay, I could have done that over here. I could have added 2x to both sides and had my x on this side. Okay? So if you just follow that rule that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side, okay? It doesn't matter which side your x ends up on, as long as it's just on one side. And you can avoid getting that negative in front of the x, which sometimes is confusing. But what you do then have to see is, okay, now I've got my x's together, but they're on the left side, or the right side, sorry. So now it's the right side that's telling me. I want to undo add 11, so I want to subtract 11. And I want to be really careful when I'm keying into my calculator and negative 1 subtract 11. I want to make sure when I type it in, I only use one minus sign between the 1 and the 11. Negative 1 subtract 11 gives me negative 12. 
So you type it like you see it. You don't see two minus signs, you see the negative one minus 11. There's my zero pair. It's x I'm trying to get by itself, so I want to undo the times by 3 by dividing by 3. And I get x equal to negative 4, which I can turn around. Okay, so there is ways to combine your terms so that there you always get a positive number in front of that. If you like getting a positive number in front of that. So if we look at E here, if we look at E here. I've got a negative number of x's on this side and a positive number on that side. So if I want to keep my positive, I would add, oops, I would add 3x. So negative 3x plus 3x is a zero pair. And you can test that out by doing negative 3 plus 3 on your calculator. But then I have a positive 8x minus 24 and 8 left on the last side. So then x is on the right now. x is what I'm trying to get by itself. So I want to undo the subtract 24 by adding 24. Crossing off my zero pair. Twenty-four plus eight is thirty-two. And I want to get x by itself, so undo multiply by eight by dividing by eight. And I get to x equals 4. All right, the next one's interesting. Put a little star beside it. The next one, I don't have a choice. I can't, if I took 9x away from this side, there wouldn't be anything on this side. Do you agree with that? When we're solving equations, we don't want to ever have nothing on one side. We always want to have something on one side and something on the other. So I have to leave the 9x there. So the only way to get the x's so they're on the same side is if I subtract 5x. That's my only choice. That's my only option for this question. Otherwise, I'll end up with nothing on one side of my equal sign. Okay, and that is really confusing. So you have to do it that way. So remember, you can't take everything off one side. You can't do that. So I've got my zero pair here. So I've got 8 left on this side. And 9x minus 5x is 4x. So I've still got something on each side of the equal. I don't want it ever to happen where I've got nothing on one side. Yeah? Can we finish this one first? And so this is my side with x. There's no adding and subtracting to undo, so what would I undo, Andrew? How would I get x by itself? Yes, divide by. Perfect. So that gives me x equal to 2, and then I can turn that around and say x is 2. Okay? Okay. All right, so here's two more examples of the kind where you can't get rid of everything on one side, so I want you to try those two on your own. 
You don't have a choice how to combine your absence because you can't take everything away from one is right. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Okay, so as I was walking around, I saw tons of people with minus 3x on both sides. They realized they couldn't take the 5x away because they'd have nothing left. And 5x minus 3x gave them 2x. And then the side with x tells you what to do. Divide by 2. And they got x equals 7, and then turned it around. Very good. And same thing here. Lots of people realized I, they wanted to add the 3x to get a positive, but they couldn't because then they would have taken everything off this side, so they had to deal with the minus 7x there. Zero pair, left with 50. And then negative 3 minus 7, negative 10x. And then I saw lots of people dividing by negative 10. They didn't drop the negative, which was great. So they got x equals to negative 5. And then turn it around. Oops, keep forgetting. For some reason, these files don't work well. Okay. All right, so then what I did was I purposefully made one of these questions where we've got lots of things on one side and just one on the other. So we're going back to this morning now and notice how both x terms are on the same side of the wall. Everybody see that? They're already on the same side of the wall. So there are like terms, I can just collect them. So I can do my color coding. So because when you see this on a, on a assignment or on the QA or on the midterm, it's not going to say they're on the opposite side of the wall. You have to be able to tell are they on the opposite sides or on the, they on the same side. So here they're on the same side. So before we start solving, we can collect the like terms. We don't have to add or subtract to both sides yet because we have 7x plus 4x both on the same side of the wall. So we really have 11x's on this side. Okay? 7x's and 4 more all on the same side. And then I've still got the minus 3. And on the other side of the wall, I've just got negative 14. No x at all on the other side. Okay? So now, because I collected the like terms, I collected like terms, I've changed it into a question, two-step equation. Okay? So I want to get x by itself. The side of x tells me what to do. I want to undo the subtract 3 by adding 3. There's my zero pair. And then I want to carefully enter into my calculator negative 14 plus 30. Okay, how you see it? Even if you know it, double check on your calculator so that you don't drop any negative signs. Okay, that's the most common thing to drop if you're doing it in your head. 
and you end up getting x equals negative 1. Okay, so this one's the same type of question, so I want you to try it on your own first, and then we'll take it up. All right, so I saw lots of people color coding. We're realizing they were all lined up. 6x minus 9x is negative 3x. So collecting the like terms. And then realizing, okay, my x is now only in one spot. So as soon as your x is only in one spot, you're going to use the first bed map and solve it. Okay? So you, people were subtracting 4 on both sides, which was lovely. And then dividing by negative 3, which was lovely. Not dropping that negative. Not just dividing by 3. And then turning the mixer around. And then putting a box around. Really nice one. Great. Negative, remember, it's negative 7, not positive 7 here. All right, our last question. And then you'll have lots of time to work on practice 12 with your prep tutor. So again, always think about axes first. My axes are on the same side of the wall. So they're on the same side of the wall. I want to color code them. They're not in order, so some people might want to do this regrouping stuff, which is fine. On the other side, do you guys see we have two numbers together? We have 15 and plus 2. They're both just numbers. So I could just add them together. 15 plus 2 is 17. So this side, it says it has 15 plus 2, that really has 17 all on that one side. Okay? Still trying to get my x's together on this side. So I would type in my calculator, negative 2 plus 6, and that's 4x. And now by collecting like terms, that's how I got the x to be in one spot only. Okay? That's how I got x to just be in one spot, was collecting like terms because they were on the same side of the wall to begin with. So then I just need to get that x by itself. I'm going to undo subtract 3. So I have 4x and 20. Divide by 4 on both sides. And we get our x equals 5. Okay? All right, so we did variables on both sides. We have to add or subtract to get them to the same side of the wall. We did, you can't, you don't have a choice because you have to leave something on both sides. And then we went back to these ones from Friday where they're on the same side of the wall and we just have to group them. 